Hi, my name is John Gibbons, and today I'm going to talk to you about the knee joint. People, in terms of therapy, struggle with this concept, but when you think about it, it's pretty straightforward, even though it's not. Potentially, I'm going to call on one of my books, The Knee Joint Complex, like I've done the Shoulder Joint Complex, and I'll probably end up writing about 100,000 words just on this one structure. But um, I always consider that if you've got a problem with your knee, then it's normally like a weak link in the chain. What that means is you need to look at the foot and ankle and you need to look at the hip, pelvis and the lumbar spine because most knee pain is not really a fault of its own. It's normally an associated problem. So we could call it like a dysfunctional pattern coming from another structure. But either way, we still need to run through some structures within knee. The knee has mainly three joints. It has a joint between the tibia and the femur that is known as the tibial femoral joint. People say it's a hinge joint, it's incorrect. We can call it a bicondylar joint or an atypical hinge joint, which means it's not a normal typical hinge. Bicondylar because of the two condyles of the femur, which articulate with the two condyles of the tibia. So this is a bicondylar joint. There's a joint on the lateral side here. This is the fibula, so this would be known as the proximal tibia fibula joint. And then we have another joint where the patella, which is a sesamoid bone, that is located within the quadriceps tendon, and the patella tendon, so it grows within. And then this is known as the patella femoral joint, and it is a synovial gliding type of joint. And many patients have pain within this area, and we call it many things like anterior knee pain, patella femoral pain syndromes, or chondromalacia patella in the teenager. Now, in terms of its bony landmarks, there are not that many, to be honest. Let's start maybe with the patella. If I turn the patella over and look at this inferior part, this is known as the lower pole also known as the apex. On the posterior, we've got the, on the lateral side, we've got the lateral facet here, and then this side is called the medial facets, and then these two articulate with the corresponding contours, if you like, of the femur. You'll notice on this one, the lateral side is slightly higher than the medial side. Why? Because it basically prevents the patella from subluxing. If we have a small patella or a higher patella, called like a patella alto, then you might find the patella is higher, then it's more prone for it to sublux laterally here. Within the knee in itself, we've got the intercondylar space around here. This just above that, this is called the trochlear groove, where the patella will, will sit. So when you are bending and extending, it will glide along that trochlear groove. I'll come back to the center shortly. On the lateral side here, where the fibula is connected, this X I've marked is the lateral femoral condyle, and then this is where the IT band tends to cross over and gives you a condition called iliotibial band friction syndrome. The IT band goes to this black area I've marked, and that's called the tubercle of Gurdy, named after a French surgeon called Nicolas Gurdy, and that's where it connects to in here, and that's on the condyle of the lateral tibia. On the medial tibia side, there are three areas. This area is called the pes anserinus, which basically means the goose foot. And the SGT, so it means the sartorius, the gracilis, and the semitendinosus, will come down and conjoin to this area just here. Just above that will be the condyle of the tibia. And then moving on, we've got the condyle on the femur, on the medial side, and if I just rotate it round, where I've marked it in blue just here, this is called the adductor tubercle, and then this will be for the contact of the adductor magnus. And the other contact of magnus will be onto the linear aspera on the posterior part of the femur. Uh, further down, where the tendon of the patella attaches, will be onto the tibial tubercle of a tibial tuberosity. Typically in boys around 14, they might get a condition called an Osgood schlatter, and that was named after Robert Osgood and Carl Schlatter in 1903. And it's basically a traction apophysitis where the tendon attaches to the apophysis of the bone and then causes a reaction around this area. On top of the tibia, we have got the plateau. And on the plateau, we've got the two menisci. And if you look in here, we can see that they look slightly different. This is known as a closed C on the lateral side. This meniscus is known as an open C. The lateral side has a tendency to move a bit more. Why? Because it does not attach to the lateral ligament on the outside, and it doesn't attach to the joint capsule. On the medial side, the medial meniscus attaches to the 
uh, medial collateral ligament, the deep fibers, and also to the joint capsule. There are tiny little coronary ligaments that hold them down, but either way the lateral meniscus still has a tendency to move, whereas the medial side doesn't. I've also marked on here, I've tried to replicate a tear known as a bucket handle. Think about a bucket with a handle, it can lift and lower down. And that's what I'm trying to replicate on this side here. On this side, I'm trying to show a simple tear to the posterior horn on the lateral meniscus at the back. On this area, I've also marked a blue area here because potentially, again on teenagers, this part can actually fall into the joint and they call it an osteochondritis desiccans. If it was part of bone, you can see it on x-ray. If it's just cartilage, you can't. So maybe an MRI to show the loose body. Now, in terms of the ligaments, we've got two pairs of collaterals, which is on the sides, and then we've got two cruciates, which is in the center. On the lateral side, it is almost like saying it is a little finger. It is typically four to six centimeters long, it is round, and it only goes from the epicondyle on the femur to the head of the fibula. And then this prevents the movement known as varus. So this would be a varus stress test. So when you have impact this way, then that ligament, you can see, stretches, and then that ligament might tear. But as I said, it's easily palpable, this one. On the medial side, they reckon this is one of the most common injured ligaments in the body, and especially on football players. It has three separate bands here. Even though this is the superficial fiber of the medial collateral ligament, it has an anterior, middle, and posterior of the superficial. And if you turn it over, it has a deep fiber underneath, which directly attaches or to the medial meniscus and the medial aspect of the joint capsule. And if you were to tear this one, typically it is done by a valgus stress test. So if I held the knee and did this, you can see that this ligament is on stretch. So that's known as a valgus stretch. And then it is normally lengthwise, depends how tall you are, between six to nine centimeters long. Now, I presume the most important ligaments we have are the cruciate. You can see the anterior cruciate one here, and then behind it, which is actually torn on my structure here, we have a posterior cruciate. The anterior cruciate ligament prevents the tibia. If I held a femur and I pull the tibia forward, the ACL, the anterior cruciate, prevents anterior movement of the tibia in respect to the femur. Or posterior movement of the femur in respect to the tibia. But most of the time we tend to pull the tibia forward, so it's called a draw test. We can also do another test called the Lachman's maneuver and another test called the pivot shift. These are not in the video because I'm only talking about the anatomy. The posterior cruciate ligament, if that tears, typically we have what we call a sag sign. So if you're laying on your back, the tibia could drop like this and that's called a posterior sag, named after Godfrey. They call it the Godfrey sag sign test. So the PCL is torn, you might notice you have posterior movement of the tibia in respect to the femur or anterior movement of the femur in respect to the tibia. Now, there are many muscles, we can't really see the muscles on here, so I will leave them for another video. But the idea of this one is just to show you some of the bony landmarks, talk about the joints, and then briefly talk about the ligaments. I hope you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to my channel.